let's talk power rankings. I don't know what exactly you're bringing up here, Omar, but um, effectively, there are two ways you can do this. The way I did it, I did it actually on Christmas Day, and I thought I'll just keep it the same, and I'll just try and justify it a little bit, um, is kind of expectations for the entirety of the season. And there's the other approach, which is like, okay, where do the teams actually sit right now? Because I think where teams sit right now, based on practice, and Austin definitely has probably some more insight to this than a lot of the community does as to how good these teams are looking theoretically. And I'm sure, you know, coaches in general have a good idea. Um, yeah, here we go. Boston minute best. Interesting comment. So this is the thing. Right now, Boston are way better than this, like my tier list gives them credit for. Um, however, when I look at their team on the entirety of the season, you know, I think they could be pretty good, but they've got methods, TJ, you know, Nero and, and Caps. That of course, changes can be made that make things different there. But I think in terms of skill ceiling, at the end of the day, they came in with a roster that is picked up the scraps of what was left outside of the league. Right now, they're meshing really well and having good success. But my perspective is that when the other teams actually figure things out, they should just beat them on just better skill overall. So that's kind of how I've got things going now. Having phase solo in S tier is a very, very solid argument, frankly. Um, and the reason why I put the team so close is just because I thought that it, it's really difficult to tell going into a new game how the teams are going to be and how much difference there's actually going to be. Like, I don't think you can ever really know going into a new game that like, hey, this team's just going to be way far and away better than the rest of the, the league like phase was last year. I think it's somewhat unlikely that will happen again. Um I don't know enough about how these teams have been playing in scrims to say the Ultra aren't right there with them. They might certainly not be. It's, you know, seems unlikely they'll be able to compete quite at the level that they were at the end of last year again this year. Maybe they can. And then Optic seem to be certainly the scariest team out of the new rosters, no question, um, at least on paper and right now. So that's why I've kind of put them all in S tier. It's, it's kind of... You know, it's an interesting one, right? But I just think that the teams in general will be quite quite close. And I didn't want to put too many teams in a single tier. Um, and then there's title contenders. And right now, these three teams, from what I've seen in scrims, have not been looking particularly good. So this is not an expectation of how these teams will look this weekend. Because um, I don't think they're going to be this good. But, you know, I do think that in the long term, New York should figure things out. I think my concern here, because I did make this in December now, is that Los Angeles Grillers are actually going to be, no, and maybe Thieves as well, are going to be nowhere near as good as I've kind of put them here. But this is kind of based on the theoretical talent of what this roster should be capable of with enough time to practice and get things ready um and maybe with even some changes i don't know but yeah lag i think so and la thieves as well not been playing all that much don't seem to particularly enjoy the game um which is a concern compared to some of these other rosters so but i do think in the long term these are the squads that have the most potential to win championships outside of the s tier guys um and then you go down to potential this is why like minnesota you know i kind of <laughs> to be honest i don't want to seem like a minnesota hater because i like all the people involved but i just feel like last year i went into the year saying minnesota would be the most overrated team i think i was probably correct given that they made changes and they were pretty woeful until they brought standing into the team then actually got good um this year might not be the same thing but and maybe they'll be better than this at the start just because these other teams aren't so good but i'm just not convinced that this team especially in the respawns really has what it takes in a super fast paced game that this is going to be um so i'm just not convinced in in minnesota i'm still putting them here just ahead of a london and surge and you know it's difficult to say because i think london and surge as i described are two of the teams that i think have the most potential to actually do something kind of crazy and maybe even make a grand final or something um but yeah they could be real squads that punch above their weight and the reason why I kind of put the above, above Boston is because I think the talent on these teams is just straight up better. I think that the teams are quite similar, really, like Boston, London, and Surge. I kind of think of them all in a similar category. But um, I think the London and Surge are straight up a better talent. So over the whole of the season, I expect London and Surge to do better. But it's kind of crazy the fact that I, you know, I'm putting a team like Boston at 10th in the overall rankings given how good they are right now and still how good they can be. I just think the league is that competitive. Um, Florida 11th, I'm not 
convinced at their roster, frankly. I think they've probably looked quite good online early on, but a team that if they... I can't see them stringing together too many series wins in a row. As such, I think it's going to be difficult for them to make it past like top six at a major. Um, and Paris is certainly in a similar boat here as well, where, you know, they've got some talent, they can win some series, but they're not going to win three series in a row. Like, you know, my prediction is they're never going to win three series in a row the whole year. They're going to win max two, um, if not just one, and then they'll lose a couple of series, they'll win another one, lose a couple of series. I don't think they have what it takes to ever string a couple together, which is why I don't see them having basically any success. Um, so, okay, that's my perspective on kind of overall season expectations going in. I might, you know, maybe I'll tweak some things based on the scrims the last couple of weeks or so, but... Over to you, Austin, for your perspective on kind of how you perceive things going into this weekend specifically. You can, of course, touch on the season as a whole as well. But I think you have some good perspective here on like uh, how teams are looking so far in this game. Yeah, so I'll let Omar bring up mine. So mine is more not on the whole season because I think things are going to drastically change um, going into like week by week pretty much. But for what I did is um, I did mine for the kickoff classic and what, what I expect going into that. Obviously, like, things are going to change after that. But so, like, mine, I, I don't know, Omar, do you have mine up? Um, maybe not. So, my, mine, uh, I, obviously, I put my team, like, first. Um, honestly, us, Texas, Toronto are on the same level. Like, I really think, like, those three could win tournaments. Um, I put uh, Toronto and in, in Texas on, like, the title contenders just because... Like there is, I I feel like there's a gap between like us three and then the rest of the pack, like currently right now. Well, it's like not, <laughs> yeah, I see that rap, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah. So that that's how I started right there. Um, for the potential, obviously I put um Boston, Seattle, London, and Minnesota. Um, Boston right now is actually looking very very good in scrims. They they're kind of shocking me how well they looked. I don't know if that's a honeymoon period. I don't know if that's gonna keep if they're gonna keep getting better. I don't know. If, like, obviously, this isn't the best we've seen out of them, but I feel like they're looking really, really strong right now. Uh, Seattle, London, obviously, I hyped them up for the when we were looking at the bracket. Those two teams, I actually think, are, are really, really set up. I think they're really, really well. I think they're going to get better as the season gets along. I don't think they're going to be the, at their best right now because Lamar and Trey have so much to, like, teach that I feel like once those guys get into the thick of it, like, get into tournaments, getting into that where it's stressful like high intensity environments that's when lamar and trey are going to be able to teach them the most and really progress them in their careers so like that's why i think like those guys right now have potential but they could shock us at the kickoff but they also might like flutter just a little bit minnesota obviously i don't know how well they're doing in hard points but i know they're obviously a very very good S D team very good control team so like that's why I put them in the potential, even though I think like LAG and LAT are on the same level as them. That's why I moved them up because I think they anything like that team is just so much strategy, so much in-game IQ that like they're obviously always going to be a really good S and D team. Like when you think of all four of their players, all four of their coaches, like they all they have a lot of in-game IQ over there. They're going to be really creative and really good on that side. Um, for the uh, for the mid at best, like I I nicknamed mine uh, middle of the pack because I I like. I still think these guys could could really shine. Um, like I, I think LEG and LAT. Well, let me start off with this: LEG, LAT, in New York. I don't know how much they've been scrimming. I know a lot of these teams took off a lot of time going into this, so I don't. I didn't want to just put them in. I didn't want to put anyone in the PSG like category. I, I left them <laughs> there because I know a lot of these guys haven't been scrimming a lot. So I think that might that, that might translate to a weaker kickoff performance, but stronger down the. Like obviously, they're if they put in the work, they'll be stronger down the road. Like obviously, LAT, New York, LAG are not going to be bad all season. Like I, they will definitely get better. But like right now, I don't know how much they've scrimmed. Uh, I don't think it's much. So like that's why I'm putting them that low. Florida and Paris, I actually think are better than the worst two teams last year. If that makes sense. Like when you look at the worst two teams last year, they couldn't really compete too well. Where like those two right now, even though they might be the consensus um, eleven and twelve, are actually pretty strong in the respawn. So like that's something that could end up in a lot of um, upsets. So, you know, for them, I didn't want to put them in the lowest list because I don't know control in S and D for them. They could be really, really good in that mode, and or they may be really bad in that mode, and that's when you put them down there. But for right now, they actually do have some promise in the respawns. 
Um, they've done pretty well, um, but you know those are teams that you know they might need a roster change here or there. They might they might need a really good S and D um, performance. So you don't know. For uh, for LA Thieves, like obviously, like I had my concerns with the two AR, like like with their positions, but I definitely think they're going to be able to figure it out because they have a lot of like talent on that team. Right? Like on Voidraza, Kenny, Octane, like they have a lot of just pure talent. So like they'll work it through. Um, like all those teams in that list, they all have like one worry for me. Like whether it's chemistry, whether it's communication, because like I do think like Clay and Krim are not going to be. I feel like they're going to be amazing at some point this season. They're just going to come out and just spank teams out of nowhere. But like that team, I'm honestly really, really worried about communication with their SMGs. Mm. Um, that's a definite red flag. Like Paris, I don't know how they're going to be in the uh, slaying wise. That's a red flag. Like Florida, I don't know how where they're going to be in the more strategic like control and S and D modes. That's a red flag for LA. Like. You know, I feel like they they will put in the work, if, like, but like, will they continuously put in the work? Will they always be like, because like, there's so much talent there, there's so much slaying power. Like, at some point, it's gonna click and it's gonna be scary, and like, they could they could easily win a tournament. You know what I mean? And like, LAG, it's just like staying on a great level chemistry wise, building off of that, getting better. You know, building like that. It's like a ladder. It's like a pyramid. You you got to keep going up that mountain and, and getting better. So, all those teams. And all the teams in the potential too. They, like every team has their own red flags. Even our team, like every team has a red flag. It's just like how much you think that will hinder them going on. But for the kickoff, like this is obviously not my list for the entire season. This is just my list for the kickoff for the entire season. Obviously, it would be completely different. Um, I have a lot of faith in like teams like New York. Maybe the, they might do like a, like some of these teams just might need a roster change, and then they'll boost up or maybe they just need more reps and because they haven't been having as many reps in the boost up but you you don't know until the kickoff obviously i remember remember like last year we like everyone thought lag was going to be horrible and then they they did really well in stage one and then like two years ago i think paris everyone thought they were going to do really bad and then they did good at the first stage so good point my list could be ass backwards at the end of the day but <laughs> you know that's just you know obviously we haven't seen a lot of sd in control so i just want to put that out there again like we're only seeing two out of the five maps so like it's really tough to judge how a team's going to perform especially in front of fans on land in a tournament environment like that's obviously going to be flipped upside down so usually experience is key so you know leg let new york could be at the top of this list by the end of um you know the kickoff but for right now i don't know how much they've practiced just based off what i've seen like obviously i saw something on the timeline about lag let I know New York hasn't scrimmed in like three weeks, so that's why I had them like lower. You know, I, New York is back. I knew they took a break. I'll rephrase that. 